Hey, what's going on? It's Justin Dickmeyer from engineerandtrainingexam.com. And in this video, we will discuss non-annual compounding. In this video, we will define the topic of non-annual compounding, walk through the general workflow of solving such problems, and jump into working an example of something we may see on the exam. The topic of non-annual compounding falls under the main category of engineering economics. Equations, symbols, tables, and information on the various topics covered in engineering economics can be referenced on pages 114 through 120 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, 8th edition, 2nd revision. It has been established in previous videos that money does not have the same value at different points in time. For this reason, we need tools, tables, formulas, and various economic factors to reference when it is necessary to compare two complex alternatives. In our last video, we dealt with continuous compounding. But up to that point in our studies, we have dealt primarily with nominal interest rates expressed in an annual basis. Having this nominal rate, as well as a defined period, we could quickly jump to referencing the appropriate economic formulas found in the table on page 114 and the compound interest table starting on page 116 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Manual to carry out the necessary analysis. However, when we encounter a problem where it states that the interest is being compounded at a rate greater than once a year, we must take a detour in our analysis and first convert that nominal rate into its effective interest rate. In other words, non-annual compounding simply means that the compounding period for the noted interest rate is greater than once a year and must first be adjusted into an effective interest rate prior to moving forward with any analysis. So let's run through the general workflow. The goal of non-annual compounding problem is the same as any of the previous problems we have encountered up to this point. To convert a certain monetary transaction or transactions into some equivalent transaction or transactions at some other point in time. Because we are dealing with an interest rate that is compounded more than once annually, say semi-annually, quarterly, monthly, etc we must convert that rate first into what is called an annual effective interest rate before continuing along in our normal workflow. The annual effective rate can be determined by using the non-annual compounding formula found on page 114 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook. The non-annual compounding formula is I is equal to 1 plus R divided by M raised to the m minus 1, where r is the nominal interest rate and m is the number of compound periods per year. Once the annual effective interest rate is de determined, the goal remains the same as before, to convert transactions into equivalent transactions at some other point in time. The next step is to carry out the problem like any other time value problem by first determining the various factors of importance. These factors include number one, the annual effective interest rate, which we've already established, number two, the period, number three, the identity of the current transactions, future, present, or annual, and number four, the equivalent value to be determined, future, present, or annual. Once these variables are defined, we can solve these problems in one of two ways. Either by using the formulas found in the table on page 114, or using the functional notation version of these formulas and referencing the compound interest table starting on page 116, both in the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook. So let's run through an example. A company has a $2 million balance on a line of credit. The terms of service on the line of credit calls for a 1.6% monthly interest on the outstanding balance. What is the annual equivalent rate, or AER, 
according to these terms. So here's the solution. Don't be put off by the term annual equivalent rate, or AER. It is the same as an effective interest rate. With that, the goal here is to determine what the annual equivalent rate, or rather the effective interest rate, is of a line of credit that charges 1.6% monthly interest on all outstanding balances. The annual equivalent rate is the as stated rate with an adjustment for the full effect of compounding. We can quickly determine the effective interest rate, which is an annual rate, by treating each month's balance as a present value and converting it to a future value accounting for the monthly interest charge. With this in mind, the effective interest can be determined by determining the nominal rate and then using the non-annual compounding formula which states I is equal to 1 plus R over M raised to the M minus 1 where R is our nominal interest rate and M is our number of compounding periods or 12. The nominal interest rate is the as stated rate without adjustment for the full effect of compounding. Therefore, in this case, all that needs to be done is to note that a monthly assessment of interest occurs 12 times in a year. So, I is equal to 12 times 1.6, which is equal to 19.2%. So this is our nominal interest rate. Plugging the values in, the effective rate interest rate is then I is equal to 1 plus 0.192 divided by 12 raised to the 12 minus 1, which is equal to 21%. So the annual equivalent rate, AER, on this line of credit is 21%. So that's it. There are a few problems we can run into. First, we could incorrectly account for the interest when plugging it into the non-annual compounding formula. For instance, in this case, we could have plugged in 1.6 for R, which is the monthly interest rate on all outstanding balances. We must first convert this rate into a nominal rate before using it in any formulas. We could also very easily just solve for the nominal interest rate and stop at that. The nominal interest rate is the as stated rate without adjustment for the full effect of compounding. We have to remember that the effective interest rate is the as stated rate with an adjustment for the full effect of compounding, which is determined using the non-annual compounding formula. Well that's it for this video. Do you know anybody that would benefit from this lesson? If so, let's try to reach out and help others by sharing this video with them. Also, take a second to like this video and leave a comment and tell me how it will help you move forward in your goal of becoming a professional engineer. And finally, type in engineerintrainingexam.com into your URL bar and visit the site to download for free the transcript to this video along with the example problem and solution we worked. While you are there, you can also sign up for the free EIT Academy Boot Camp, 137 pages and over 50 practice problems and solutions to get you on track to passing this exam.